Okay, so preaching against sin um, is helpful to us. Now, as part of my introduction, I just want to consider things about sin. Un- understand this. Sin is inexcusable. Uh, we cannot excuse sin in our own life or in lives of others. And uh, understand this. God expects us to stand for Him. God stands for holiness and God stands against sin. And uh, God wants us to do that. Uh, we are all tempted. There's no such thing as somebody that just doesn't sin anymore. We're going to see that. Uh, the greatest commandment is to love God with all your heart, soul, strength, and mind. And the next is to love your neighbor as yourself. Well, that's 24-7. Uh, you don't love God with all your being 24 hours a day, uh, 7 days a week, 365 days a year, 60 minutes in the hour, and 60 seconds in the minute. It, we just don't do it. We are sinners. And the Bible says, but every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust, enticed. So, God says, you know, there's people that say, well, I no longer sin. What they're saying is, I no longer do certain sins. We all sin. Pride is sin. Uh, you know, there's, there's just so many things that people don't even consider as sin. But Paul, uh, sorry, God says in 1 John 1, verse 8 and 9, if we say we have no sin... Does anybody know the next part? We deceive ourselves. We deceive ourselves. We deceive ourselves. And the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say we have not sinned, we make him a liar. And his word is not in us. So if we say we don't sin, we're calling God what? A liar. A liar. I sin. I still sin. Uh, I might say a sharp word to my wife, or it might not even be sharp. It might be a, kind of just with a bad tone of voice. That's sin. I might be sharp with my, my, my family. I, I might be, uh, you know, have a, 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 a wrong thought. I, I might, uh, you know, these are sins. And understand this. Sin destroys. Our Proverbs 11, verse 3. The integrity of the upright shall guide them, but the perverseness of transgressors shall destroy them. Understand this. Sin destroys my life. It's, it's a cancer that eats away. And it has to be dealt with. Uh, Proverbs 11, verse 19 says, As righteousness tendeth to life, so he that pursueth evil pursueth it to his own death. Now, there's two basic reactions to sin in my life. I can do one of two things. What are the two things? Anybody have any idea? And they start with C. Change. Change, okay. Confess. Confess. And with confession comes change. Okay. So that's the second one. But the most common one starts with C and it's something else. This is what most of us like to try to do. It's our nature. Sorry? Cover it. That's it. We either try to cover it or we confess it, right? Covering it denies that our, our sin. And so there's many variations to, to covering it. We can try to cover it in many ways. But confessing it, there's only one way. So uh, I want to encourage you this morning, when you sin, confess it. So first of all, covering sin. Uh, we've had children and the uh, you know, I, I think most parents have had a child. You say, Do you, did you take that? And, and, and they put their hand behind their back and they say, no. <laughs> it happens. <laughs> and that's just their natural reaction. They try to cover it. Now, they don't, they don't understand that you know a whole lot more than them. And putting uh, your, your hand behind your back when you've got a biscuit in it does not hide it very well, does it? You try to cover it. And that's the very same thing. But we have a lot more experience in that. So we don't try to cover it like that, but we still try to cover our sins in many ways. And so I'll, I'll talk about that this morning. Obviously, it goes back to Adam and Eve. Adam and Eve partook of the free fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And when they did that, what did they do? Sorry? They tried to hide. They tried to hide. They tried to cover their sin by hiding from God. And they, then they tried try to cover their sin by another way. 
with the leaves. So, so, but, but, but it's all to cover their sin, isn't it? To think, to think, you know, here's God that created everything, and we can hide our sin from God, and we think that's pretty crazy, isn't it? But we can still do that ourselves, and uh, you remember uh, when God gave Israel the Promised Land, the first city that they went to conquer was what? Before the Canaan land, but what's the first city in there? Starts with the J. Jericho. Jericho. When they cover, conquered Jericho, the stuff from that was to go to God. But there was a man named Achan. And he didn't, and the next city was going to be a little city. It was a two letter, anybody know it? AI. It's, it's an easy one, two letters. And so they, they, they conquered Jericho, and they come to Ai, and they send just a little bunch of people because, like, this is, a, this is nothing compared to Jericho. And Ai was able to defeat them, and, and they're, in, 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 uh, they're just in shock. And, and God points out there's a problem. There's sin in the camp. And it turned out there was a man by the name of Achan. And uh, Achan makes a, a, a fourfold confession. I saw, I coveted, I took, and I hid. But I want to just take on that last point. He hid it. He did something that was wrong, but he tried to hide it. And when, and this is Achan's uh, confession in, uh, in uh, Joshua 7, verse 21. When I saw among the spoils a goodly uh, Babylonian ish garment and 200 shekels of silver and wedge of gold about 50 shekels weight then I covered them and behold uh, and took them and behold they are hid in the midst of the earth uh, of my tent and the silver under it and he hid them Achan you can't hide from God God knew you stole that but he tried to do it <laughs> you know so uh, we tried to hide it and, and then we deny that we did it. Um, the, I wish, uh, I, I tried to find it, but I couldn't uh, find it. But there's a kind of a poem about nobody in, in the family. And uh, I don't know, there was five of us. So if uh, somebody did something, sometimes my parents didn't know who did it. And uh, uh, they say, who did this? But nobody would answer. Uh, and uh, sometimes it would have been me. I remember I did something pretty stupid. And uh, it wasn't so bad, but it was pretty stupid. And my parents said, who did it? And uh, I didn't answer. I, I tried to hide my sin by denying I didn't do it. I can think of a couple of instances when I did that. Uh, I, I may have hid it from them, but I didn't hide it from God. And by denying that we did this, it doesn't hide anything from God, does it? You know, uh, it, it's amazing. We still do it. Another thing, uh, we deny doing sin by saying it's not sin. Oh, that's not this bad. That, that's not that bad. It's a little white lie, or, or I, I, I uh, it's, it's, you know, we, we just make light of sin. We, we, we deny that we're sinning because we don't call it sin. Uh, but the Bible says, whosoever transgresseth, whosoever committeth sin transgresseth also the law, for sin is the transgression of the law. Now, one of the big things that people do when they sin, Adam and Eve both did. What did they do? So we covered that they, they, they uh, hid, and we covered that they, they sowed fig leaves. What else did they do? Blame somebody else. Blame somebody else. Isn't, isn't, that, isn't that the way? You know, uh, well, my wife made me angry. That's why I, I said that unkind word. It's always my wife's fault, isn't it? <laughs> oh, it's always my husband's fault. Oh, it's always my kid's fault. You know, we, we try to blame others. Uh, uh, Samuel when he did wrong. And Samuel, Saul said unto Samuel, I have sinned, for I have transgressed the commandments of the Lord uh, and thy words, because I feared the people and obeyed their voice. Samuel, uh, we'll talk about this, Saul did wrong in, in a number of things. And then he says, but I, but I obeyed the people's voice. So who's Samuel or Saul blaming? He's blaming the people. Adam blamed Eve. Eve, and he's actually... Listen to this. Adam actually blames God because he says, the woman which thou gavest me. Listen. Genesis 3, verse 12. And the man said, the woman whom thou gavest to be with me, she gave me of the tree and I did eat. 
You know, he didn't say, oh yeah, I did. I disobeyed you, God. You gave me a clear commandment, and I did. I disobeyed. No, Lord, it's that woman. It's always that woman's fault. We we just deny our sin by blaming others, and and you know we make incredible excuses. I when I read this in 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 Exodus, I I, I laugh. Uh, it just to me is funny. But go to Exodus chapter thirty two. When Moses was away, Aaron did wrong, and he made the golden calf, remember? And in Exodus 32, he's going to have to give an account. And uh, verse 19, And it came to pass as soon as he came nigh into the camp that he saw the calf and the dancing Moses anger is waxed hot okay so so I'm not going to read every verse here but we know Moses come to the camp Aaron's in the camp and they've got this golden idol a calf and they're dancing and, 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 and immorality is going on uh, in verse 21 and Moses said unto Aaron what did this people did this people unto you that thou hast brought so great a sin upon them. And Aaron said, Let not the anger of the Lord wax hot. Thou knowest thy people that they are set on mischief. Now look at this. This is funny to me. For they said unto me, Make unto us gods, and we shall, which shall go before us. As for Moses, this Moses, the man that brought us we, up from out of the land of Egypt, we, not, we know not what has become of them. And so I said, and so and I said unto them, Whoso hath any gold, let them break it off. So let them. So they gave it to me, and I cast it in the fire, and they came out this calf. He says, "You guys, every, everybody, give me your gold," and I just threw it in the fire, and poof, out came this golden calf. I laugh when I, I read that because obviously it didn't happen exactly like that. Did Aaron throw the gold in, and and and, and a calf come out? No, he's obviously made it, but like. It's not my fault. I just threw this gold in and poof, out came this calf. I mean, that's a pretty ridiculous excuse, isn't it? Uh, an excuse is a sack of truth stuffed with lies. I don't know. I read that years ago, and, and I thought it was so true. There's a skin of truth to our, 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 our excuses. But when we really look at it, there's untruth. Now, I said we're going to look at Saul uh, again. He is a wonderful example of being terrible. He was just he was a fleshly man. So in the Old Testament the priests had certain activities that they were to do and it was for the priests to make the burnt offerings and uh, now look at 1 Samuel chapter 13 verse 12 or verse 11 first. And Samuel said, What hast thou done? And Saul said, Because I saw that the people were scattered from me, and that thou camest not within the days appointed, and that the Philistines gathered themselves together at Mishmash. Therefore said I, The Philistines will come down now upon me to Gilgal, and I have not made supplication unto the Lord. I forced myself there for an offered a burnt offering. I forced myself. I, I, just, I just had to do it. Listen. We can't make excuses for sin. This is the, the, the key point I want us to see at the start. Our excuses for sin are, are wrong. And we need to see sin as my sin. No, my wife didn't make me do it. No, my children didn't make me do it. No, my circumstances didn't make me do it. I did it. And we need to come to, to, that, to that point of stop making excuses. And uh, so he, he says, I forced myself. And uh, then he makes another excuse in 1 Samuel 15, verse 21. But the people took of the spoil, the sheep and the oxen, and the chief things which they should have been utterly destroyed to sacrifice unto the Lord thy God in Gilgal. So now... Who is he blaming here? The people. 
everybody else did it, but I, I'm, I'm just the king. I, I mean, I, I know I'm supposed to be the ruler, but everybody forced me to do it. And this next one is very common as well. Take your Bible and turn to Genesis chapter 4. And people use this to get away with sin. In Genesis 4, verse 5, But unto Cain in his offering he had not respect, and Cain was very wroth, and his countenance fell. Cain knew that he should have offered the sacrifice that was his parents would have told him about, a lamb. But he, did, did, he wanted to do it his way. And when it... When his sin was pointed out, he became angry. You know that's what happens when people do, you know, uh, say somebody points out somebody's sin, and rather than facing their sin, they get angry and they think, well, by my anger, I won't have to deal with this anymore. And, and the people try to deal with their anger. And somehow they think that hides their sin. Your anger doesn't hide your sin. Uh, and, and this is a very, very common thing that happens. Asa... Uh, king of Judah, uh, he, uh, the, uh, the, the prophet came to him and, and told him, listen, you, God protected you before and, and, and you turned your back on God. And uh, he says, the prophet said, herein thou done foolishly, therefore from henceforth thou shalt have wars. Then Asa was wroth with the seer and put him in the prison's house, for he was in a rage with him because of this thing. Listen, Asa, you're the problem, not the person that told you. And this is what happens. If somebody points out somebody's sin, they get angry at the person. Well, really, what they need to do is get right with God. Isn't that what Asa needed to do? But he got angry with the, the, with the man of God. Uh, Uzziah did the same thing. And... Uh, His heart was lifted up, it says in, in 2 Chronicles chapter 26. His heart was lifted up to his destruction. A lifted up heart, what's the one word for a lifted up heart? Pride. Proud, pride. And this is the reason for most of our sin. Pride. You didn't treat me the way I should be treated. Pride. I didn't get what I wanted. Pride. I deserve this. Pride. And we all have a problem with pride we have to it we have to be careful it rears its ugly head and Uzziah thought well I, I I'm the king but again I'm going to do the office of a priest and uh, God judged him and it says and Uzziah the king was leper under the day of his death Uzziah suffered leprosy for the day of his death so we cover our sins. We can do it by many, many ways. And, and there's other ways that I didn't even mention. But that's not what God wants. Whosoever covers his sins shall not, what? Prosper. Prosper. God wants us to, what's the next thing? C word? Confess. confess. We've got to confess. Now, understand this. When we say my sin's not that bad, that's not confessing, is it? Confession is, is, is calling sin what it is. Wickedness, God hates it. God hates every sin. And somehow we think, well, I didn't do that bad because it, was, it wasn't that bad of a sin. Wow. There's no such thing as that bad of a sin. You know, there's no sin that's not that bad. Understand? God is holy. So God hates all sin. Psalm 41 verse 4 says, I said, Lord, be merciful, heal my soul, for I have sinned against thee. Sin is against who? God. First and foremost, if I am angry and yell at my wife, first and foremost, that sin is against God. It's against God because God created her. It's against God because he gave her my wife. It's against God because it, could, it uh, breaks his word. And so we must realize that my sin is against God. And what I need to do is I need to, 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 to confess that sin and forsake it. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts. Let them return to the Lord and he will have mercy upon them and to our God 
for he will abundantly pardon. We've got to take account and take responsibility for our sin. I cannot confess my sin to God when I'm blaming my wife. Well, if she hadn't said this to me and she hadn't said that to me, I would not have said this. That's not, that's not it. You know, sometimes somebody's going to, 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 uh, to do something wrong to you. So today after the service, I go kick Fatty in the shin and, and I yell at him. And then he punches me about 10 times in the head. Would, 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 he, would he be able to say, well, he kicked me in the shin? I will, I, no, I may have provoked him. But that sin would have been his, right? It wouldn't be right for punch out a poor old man with a bad leg. <laughs> it just wouldn't be the thing to do. I'm, I'm making a, a, a completely farcical thing. But the point is, we have to say that was sin. And sometimes people might do something to us. People, people doing this, uh, something to us does not allow us to have a, re a sinful reaction. You understand what I'm saying? Uh, it will happen. People will provoke you. But I need to say, so I'm in a shop, somebody pushes in front of me and I, and I yell at them. and I have to say, Lord, I sin. And I get, need to get right with that person. But I've got to first come to the point where I will say it as sin. If we confess our sins, confessing your sin is saying, I did wrong. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. When you get saved, you're saved. That's your standing. You're in Christ. But you have a state. And your state changes. It changes according to, to how you act. So, I'm in Christ. I'm forgiven. I'm in heaven. But my actual uh, fellowship with God is based upon my living. So when I when I sin, I, I break fellowship with God, but when I confess my sins, He's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So I want us to turn to, to Proverbs 28. And this is something I want, it's so important to see. We need to forsake our sin. People do this, they sin, they confess it, and then they go back to the same sin again. That's not right. Proverbs 28, verse 13. He that covereth his sin shall not prosper, but whoso confesseth and forsake them, forsaketh them shall have mercy. So God wants us to confess and what? Go ahead, Miss Priscilla. Forsake. Forsake. We've got to forsake. What's that mean? To forsake. Put us behind us and never do it anymore. And and our tempt we, we the devil would tempt us to okay, you've got that sin, you've done it, you've got it confessed, and then do it again. No, God doesn't want that. He wants us to forsake our sin. That's what repentance is. Repentance is turning our back on that sin. To turn to God from our sin. It's a turning. And that's what God wants. He wants us to forsake our wicked way. Isaiah 55 verse 7 says, Let the wicked forsake his way, and the unrighteous man his thoughts, and let them return unto the Lord, and he will have mercy upon him. For our and to our God, and he will abundantly pardon. God will pardon our sin. He will abundantly pardon. But he wants us to forsake our way and our wicked thoughts and turn to him. Now, one of the reasons people won't confess and forsake sins is they're afraid of the consequences if there's a sin is being found out. Listen. We know in Second Corinthians, sorry, in First Corinthians, uh, a terrible thing was being done: uh, immorality, uh, man having a sexual relations with his, his uh, stepmother, or mo uh, and it was just wicked. It was wicked, and the man was actually a Christian. That's hard to believe, isn't it? And the church had to take discipline on that man. But you know what he did? He faced the consequences of his sin. And when we read in 2 Corinthians, 
wonderful 2 Corinthians chapter 2. But if any have caused grief, he hath not grieved me, but in part, that I may not overcharge you all. Sufficient to, a man, to such a man is this punishment, which was afflicted of many. So they, they punished this man. Now, so contrawise, you ought rather to forgive him and comfort him, lest perhaps such a one should be swallowed up with overmuch sorrow. Wherefore, I beseech you that you would confirm your love towards him. This man faced his sin, confessed it, got right, and was uh, reconciled with the church. That's a wonderful story, isn't it? You know what happens in churches when somebody's done wrong? They run away. That's what happens usually. This man could have run away and quit coming to church. I mean, he certainly did very wicked, hadn't he? I mean, it's hard to believe he could do such a wicked thing. But he repented and faced the consequences. And sometimes there is consequences for our sins. But we're better to face the consequences of our sins than running from God for the rest of our life, aren't we? Well, just a, uh, no particular sin being mentioned, but just how am I to deal with my sin? I've got to stop trying to cover it. Cover it by making it light of it, covering it by trying to hide it. No, what do I have to do? I can have to confess it, repent of it, turn from it, and then have my fellowship restored. I hope this message will be a help to you. It's not meant to be a, a, a negative message. It's supposed to be a positive message to help us. Because if we say we have no sin, we are a liar. And the truth is not in us. Every one of us sin at times. So let's not try and hide it. Let's forsake it. Amen? Amen. Let's close in a word of prayer.